Hi, this is Brandy from Acer Service. On the last part of this series, I showed you how to create recovery media on a USB flash drive. Now I want to show you how to use that flash drive, or one you've received directly from us, like the one I have here, to reload Windows on your computer. The first thing you need to do is make sure your computer is off and plug your USB flash drive into it. Once that's done, turn your computer on, and as soon as you see something come up on the screen, you want to tap the F2 key one time. This will load you into the BIOS where you'll see some information about your computer. Along the top of the screen, you'll see a few different menus. The first one, which we're currently on, is called Information. We want to be on Boot. Using the arrow keys on your keyboard, move over until the Boot menu is highlighted. You'll see a list of devices. The one you want to be first in the list is USB HDD, which will be followed by a model name, in my case, Kingston. If it's already first in the list, then you're good and you can leave it. If it's not, use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move down until it's highlighted. Then tap the F6 key to move it up until it's the first thing in the list. When it is, use your arrow keys to move over to the exit menu at the top of the screen and press enter on exit saving changes. It'll ask you to confirm that you want to save an exit. Just press enter again and your computer will restart. It'll come up to a message that says Windows is loading files. After this, you'll see the normal Windows loading screen, but instead of going into Windows, it'll load into the eRecovery management screen. The first thing you'll need to do is select your language and then click Continue. Click OK to confirm your language selection. Here's where you'll choose how you want to restore. The first option, Restore Operating System to Factory Defaults, will delete all data on your computer's main C drive and reinstall Windows. It's important to back up anything you need to save when using this option if possible. The second option, Restore Operating System and Retain User Data, will do the same thing, but any data inside of your user account folder will be saved and placed in a backup folder. Data stored elsewhere won't be saved, so it's important to still back anything else up that you need to save. The third option, Completely Restore Computer to Factory Defaults, will install Windows and its recovery partition on a blank hard drive. This option won't work if you have any data already on the drive. For the case of this video, I'm going to use the first option. Click on it, and you'll see a notice letting you know that all of your data is about to be erased. It's important that you back up any files you need to save before you progress any further, if possible. Also, make sure your computer is plugged into AC power and any external devices are unplugged except for your USB recovery drive. When you're ready, click Next. This screen just lets you know where it's going to restore to, in this case, your computer's hard drive. Click Next and another notice will pop up, letting you know again that all of your data is going to be erased. When you're ready, click OK and the restore process will start. It will take a little while for the recovery process to complete, but it will keep you aware of its progress along the way. The time it takes will vary based on your computer. Mine took around 20 minutes or so. When it's done, you'll see this screen letting you know it's finished. At this point, you need to remove the USB flash drive from the computer. Once you've done that, go ahead and click OK, and the computer will restart. When it comes back on, you'll see the normal Windows loading screen, but it will be followed by various processes, setups, and installations. At some point during this process, it'll restart on its own and load back into Windows. From here, it'll go about installing the various bits of software that came with your computer, which could take some time to complete. You'll also see it restart at a few points along the way, but it's just part of the process, and there's nothing you'll need to do but wait for it to finish. When the setup has completed, you'll see this screen, which is the same as the one you saw when you turned your computer on for the first time. From here, you can just progress through the Windows setup like normal. If you have any questions, please visit our website at support.acer.com.